Okay. Okay, now you know you all have to behave because we're recording. So um, welcome to our Wednesday webinar sponsored by the National Consortium for Health Science Education. My name is Nancy Allen. I'm trying to get my camera set here. And I serve as executive director for this group. And we also co-sponsor this with um, our teacher organization, which is um, the Health Science Educators Group Association. So if you're not a member of that and you might wanna consider um, doing that, um, it's uh, information is on our website about how to join our teacher organization. We're so excited today. Um, this will be recorded. You heard that. And um, it will be available at the um, link that I put there in the chat, healthscienceconsortium.org forward slash webinars. You will receive a certificate of participation. Um, it, you may or may not need that. But for some teachers, they like to be able to document their time, their investment of time for professional development. So if that's helpful to you, um, you'll get that uh, within the week and you'll be able to insert your name and save it um, for your um, renewal or whatever you may need um, to document your um, time here with us today. So today we're excited to have um, Jane Cregan and Rebecca Pretty, and they are both employees of the American Music Therapy Association, longtime employees, I found out today. And um, that means it's a great place to work and a great profession to represent. So uh, Rebecca reached out, um, I guess, over the summer and said, we really would like to share with um, your teachers about this profession that we represent that may not be as high profiled as some of other uh, health professions that they know about, but perhaps this is a webinar that they can use in their class. So with that, I'm gonna pass these two nice ladies the microphone and they'll be ready to go. And um, Rebecca, I think you're gonna be sharing your screen. So thank you so much for being here today and we appreciate your willingness to um, support our teachers with this good information. Oh, I did want to say one thing. They are wel they welcome your questions. You can just add those in the chat. And um, I'm going to sort of service their fan of white and sort of um, be looking over the questions. And we're going to attempt to answer those mostly at the end. Um, but if it's something really, so we don't want you to forget your question. So be sure and put it in the chat and we'll go back and um, the last few minutes of or last five to 10 minutes of the session, we'll be able to entertain your questions and um, we'll be finished right at five o'clock. So you can be on to your next thing. So with that, I welcome Jane and Rebecca and thank them for being with us today. Thank you, Nancy, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jane Cregan. I'm a board certified music therapist and the director of professional programs for the American Music Therapy Association. In this role, I provide support to AMTA faculty and internship directors through work with AMTA professional programs standing committees. I'm also involved in educational policy through special task forces, boards, and I assist with new degree program development. I also provide information to the general public and answer questions about music therapy as a career. Becky? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rebecca Preddy. I'm the Senior Federal Policy and Programs Analyst for the American Music Therapy Association. And my role consists of monitoring, coordinating, and implementing organizational federal advocacy strategies, along with raising congressional and federal advocacy awareness of the efficacy of music therapy services. A little bit about AMTA. AMTA is dedicated to the advancement of the public's awareness of the benefits of music therapy and increasing access to quality music therapy services for those in need. AMTA's purpose is to support the progressive development of the therapeutic use of music in rehabilitation, special education, and community settings. AMTA is committed to the advancement of education, training, professional standards, credentials, and research 
in support of the music therapy profession. So what is music therapy? Here's a definition here, our standard definition of music therapy is that music therapy is the clinical and evidence-based use of music interventions to accomplish individualized goals within a therapeutic relationship by a credentialed professional who has completed an approved music therapy program. Music therapy is an allied health profession similar to occupational therapy, speech therapy, and physical therapy. Music therapists work in partnerships and on interdisciplinary team treatment teams with physicians, nurses of every specialization, social workers, and other allied health professionals. Music and science. Uh, music therapy was established as an allied health profession in 1950, <clears throat> excuse me, in the 20th century, but the idea and practice of music as a healing influence having an effect on health and behavior dates back to ancient civilizations. Aristotle and Plato were among the first to write on the healing influence of music. The earliest references to music as therapy occurred in the late 17 and early 1800s, and the field formally began after World Wars I and II, when amateur and professional musicians played for veterans suffering both physical and emotional trauma. Currently, music therapists are highly trained, credentialed, and licensed professionals who use music as an intervention to improve, restore, or maintain physical and emotional health in clients. Research in music therapy comes from both neuroscience and psychology and finds that humans can recognize emotional contact in music and that people may respond physically or emotionally to different elements of music, such as rhythm, melody, modes such as major versus minor, and timbres. Thanks to modern medical imaging devices such as CAT scans and MRIs, research further confirms that physical and psychological responses to musical elements can now be traced to both hardwired neurological responses in the brain, as well as culturally shaped conditioning, making music a bridge between science and art. This is why in the contemporary practice of music therapy, Careful selection of music is still considered important as one applies music toward various purposes such as relaxation, enhanced movement, or pain management. Collaborative research is currently taking place in the newly established Sound Health Network, which emerged from the Sound Health Initiative, which was a partnership between the Kennedy Center and NIH, in association with the National Arts Endowment, that has brought together scientists, music therapists, artists, and the public to explore music's impact on the brain, health, and wellness. Over the next nine months, the Sound Health Network will be focusing on music therapy and related research, which will include an advisory panel of ANTA professionals. <clears throat> so how does music therapy work? Well, we know that music, as the slide says, can activate all areas of the brain. Music can activate brain regions involving listening to, reading, moving to, and playing music, and in the experiencing of memories, emotional context, and expectations associated with music. Music therapists can use all the elements of music to bring about a desired change in non-music related behavior, specifically targeting brain regions underlying these behaviors. In music, in in music therapy, music is used to build non-musical goals such as movement, speech, communication, receptive language, and cognitive skills. To explain more how music does this, I am going to cite the research of Dr. Elizabeth Stegmoller, music therapist and neuroscientist who works with Parkinson's patients and is studying the connection between neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to make changes, and music therapy. In a recent article that Dr. Stegmoller wrote in The Scientist, uh, she considers three principles of neuroplasticity, which she feels helps to explain how music therapy works. The first is dopamine, a neurotransmitter involved in neuroplasticity related to the brain's reward network. In recent years, research has shown that enjoyable music activities activates the reward network. By pairing music with non-music related behaviors, 
music therapists may be tapping into the brain's reward pathway. Number two, the Hebbian theory, which is that neurons that fire simultaneously make stronger connections. Rhythm, for example, is an, an inherent feature of music that, in addition to linking diverse behaviors to an external beat, also known as entrainment, it, rhythm may also induce synchrony in the neural networks underlying behaviors. By pairing music activities, such as movement, vocalization, breathing, and heart rate, music therapists may be eliciting simultaneous firing of neurons in brain areas involved in the control of those behaviors, strengthening neuronal connectivity and leading to faster and more permanent changes in their clients. Number three, the acoustic structure of music the impact of noise versus music on neuroplasticity. Most people would agree that music is the opposite of noise. And in her research, Dr. Stegmuller found that in examining the acoustic structure of song, song is more consonant than speech. So professionally trained musicians have less noise in both their spoken and sung acoustic signals. Music therapists are professionally trained and educated musicians with training in many instruments and voice, enabling them to minimize the amount of noise and optimize the resonating precision of their musical sounds. So music therapists may provide clearer acoustic signals, whether instrumental or vocal, than other clinicians, thereby promoting neuroplasticity in the brains of the patients they treat. Thank you. So what exactly do music therapists do? Music therapists conduct a music therapy assessment of a client to determine if treatment is indicated. If treatment is indicated, the music therapist collects a systematic, comprehensive, and accurate information to determine the appropriate music therapy interventions to provide for the client. Music therapists develop an individualized music therapy treatment plan for the client that is based upon the results of the music therapy assessment. The music therapy treatment plan includes individualized goals and objectives that focus on the needs and strengths of the client and specify music therapy approaches and interventions to be used to address these goals and objectives. Music therapists implement an individualized music therapy treatment plan that is consistent with or complementary to any other de developmental, rehabilitative, habilitative, medical, mental health, preventative, wellness care, or educational services being provided to the client. Music therapists evaluate the client's response to music therapy, documenting various changes and progress in the music therapy treatment plan and suggesting modifications as appropriate. In addition, music therapists develop a plan for determining when the provision of music therapy service is no longer needed in collaboration with the client, the physician, or other providers of healthcare or education with the client, family members of the client, and any other appropriate person upon whom the client relies upon for support. Music therapists minimize any barriers to ensure that the client receives music therapy services in the least restrictive environment. Music therapists utilize appropriate knowledge and skills to inform practice, including use of research, reasoning, and problem-solving skills to determine appropriate actions in the context of each specific clinical setting. So how to become a music therapist? The bachelor's degree in music therapy, which is a degree in music, and is 120 credits is the entry into the profession. The bachelor's degree is divided into three areas, music foundations, clinical foundations, and music therapy foundations. In music foundations, the coursework is com uh, composed of music theory and ear training, composition and arranging, music history and literature, applied music lessons, ensembles, conducting, also music Therapy students develop functional skills in piano, guitar, percussion, and voice, as well as improvisation. In the clinical foundations, these are the courses, related courses in science and psychology, such as anatomy, um, exceptionality in psychopathology, normal human development, 
principles of therapy and the therapeutic relationship. And then the music therapy foundations are all the courses related to the theory and the theory and practice music therapy techniques um, to use music in clinical settings. So the courses include foundations and principles, assessment and evaluation, methods and techniques, pre-internship training, which are music therapy experiences with at least three different populations um, concurrently with music therapy coursework, uh, psychology of music, music therapy research, and then a clinical internship, uh, six months, which is under the supervision of a music therapist, which is the final degree requirement. Once the degree and the internship are completed, an individual is eligible to sit for the board certification exam to obtain the credential MTBC or music therapist board certified, which is necessary for professional practice in the United States. Also open to people with degrees in related fields is the, what we call the post-baccalaureate equivalency, which is a certificate program of approximately 24 credits uh, that can vary depending upon the related degree. Um, this is open to people with degrees in related fields that can be music, it can be education or psychology with a music minor. Um, and students in this program will take only the courses necessary in order to complete the equivalent of the bachelor's degree without doing another entire degree. Not shown on the slide is another path called the equivalency plus masters. In this option, it's available to individuals with related degrees, uh, but students complete equivalency coursework, including the internship, and then they continue right into the master's program. So this program is a 60 credit three-year program uh, because someone is doing equivalency plus the master's at the same time. And then the advanced degree, which is the master's degree, which is open to music to uh, individuals with music therapy degrees or their equivalent. The master's degrees are approximately 36 to 40 credits, and it does allow for some specialization. For example, the master of music and music therapy, uh, the advanced coursework in music therapy is placed within a musical context. The master of music therapy, is the advanced coursework is uh, placed within the disciplinary context of theory, research, and practice in music therapy. Uh, that's the Master of Music Therapy. Master of Arts in Music Therapy, the advanced coursework is placed within the context of creative arts therapies, psychology, counseling, and social sciences. The Master of Science in Music Therapy, the advanced coursework in music therapy is placed within the context of medicine, allied health, rehab, and the physical sciences. There are also low residency and online options for the master's degree in music therapy for individuals who have the bachelor's in music therapy or its equivalent. And finally, the doctoral degree, which is approximately 44 credits and focuses on advanced competence in research, theoretical development, clinical practice, supervision, college teaching, and or administration, depending upon the title and purpose of the program. Advanced specialty, sorry, advanced specialty trainings are available in a growing array of subspecialties, which include neonative, neonatal intensive care, the NICU music therapist, or neurologic music therapy, hospice and palliative care, and guided imagery and music. And music therapy programs in the United States. Uh, currently, there are 89 AMTA approved degree programs in the United States. The yellow and green areas you see on the map show the states with music therapy degree programs. The blue areas show states that do not have music therapy degree programs. So there are music therapists in 36 of 50 states. Um, the green areas show the states that have bachelor's degree programs in music therapy, so bachelor's only programs. The yellow areas show degree show states with degree programs that are both bachelor's and master's. Um, and then the yellow areas of the map that have the slanted lines show the states that offer doctoral degrees in music therapy. The states that show the dots are 
um, are areas where there are there is degree program development, meaning that there are colleges interested in developing music therapy degree programs, and we are working with them on that. Over half of the music therapy degree programs in the United States do have master's programs uh, showing interest in advanced clinical practice. AMTA's goal is to have at least one music therapy degree program in every state. So Jane mentioned earlier that a credential is required to practice music therapy. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Certification Board for Music Therapists, or CBMT. CBMT is a non is an independent nonprofit certifying agency fully accredited by the National Commission for Certifying Agencies, or NCCA. This accreditation serves at the, as the means by which CBMT strives to maintain the highest standards possible in the construction and administration of its national examination and recertification programs, ultimately designed to reflect the current music therapy practice for the benefit of the consumer. CBMT defines the body of knowledge that represents competent practice in the profession of music therapy, creates and administers a program to evaluate initial and continuing competence of this knowledge, and issues the credential of MTBC to individuals that demonstrate the required level of competence. The MTBC, as Jane mentioned, is granted by CBMT upon successful completion of an ANTA approved academic and clinical training program and a written objective national examination, passing a written objective national examination. CBMT has credentialed thousands of professionals as board certified music therapists, and there are currently over 9,000 board certified music therapists. All board certified music therapists receive education and training in compliance procedures for state, federal, and facility regulations and accreditation. They are trained and skilled to conduct music therapy assessments, draft and incorporate goals and objectives into treatment plans, specify procedures, and define expected treatment outcomes, evaluate and make appropriate modifications and accommodations, and document the process utilizing standard tools. In addition, to demonstrate continued competence and to maintain the MTBC credential, music therapists are required to complete 100 hours of continuing music therapy education with every, within every five year recertification cycle. Music therapists are also required to carry liability insurance, and certain subspecialties mentioned by Jane previously on a previous slide require that supervision hours are accrued. As board certified music therapists, you are bound by the standards of practice and the code of ethics. In addition to talking about uh, music therapy uh, as a career and a profession, we wanted to talk to you about some specific, um, a specific collaboration that helps to advance the profession. AMTA, the American Music Therapy Association, and the Certification Board for Music Therapists collaborate on the State Recognition Operational Plan, a joint national initiative to achieve state recognition of the music therapy profession and the MTBC credential required for competent practice. Recognition of the credential is established in one of three ways, either one, through licensure, two, a music therapy registry within the state, or title protection for music therapists within the state. Desired outcomes include improving consumer access to music therapy services and establishing a state-based public protection program to ensure that music therapy is provided by individuals who meet established training qualifications, all of the qualifications discussed previously. Each year, more and more music therapists are contributing to the successful implementation of the state recognition operational plan. This national initiative, initiative involves countless volunteer hours from state task forces across the country as they educate fellow music therapists, students, clients, facility administrators, state agencies, and legislators about this need. And as you can see by the map, 
Um, music therapy um, is what recognized in all the states that are highlighted in green. All of the states that are highlighted in the lighter green have had legislative and regulatory activity in, in, the, in, the, in the history of, of the um, state recognition operational plan. And all of the states that are light blue currently have task forces that are engaged. And all of the you know, light blue and light green all indicate um, active state task forces. So as you can see, um, that just gives you a, an idea of the breadth and depth and scope of this initiative. There are 47 states that have participated at some point in the state recognition operational plan. A total of 36 states have introduced some form of music therapy legislation. There are over 150 music therapists currently active in state task force work at the state and regional level with over 300 music therapists having participated as, as task force members in the past 15 years that this initiative has been going on. In 2021, which we, uh, we still have a few possibilities here, but 17 states introduced legislation or regulatory language seeking recognition of music therapy and the board certification credential. So that's very exciting. The collaboration between AMTA and CBMT has been truly successful. And although there are different areas of focus for both organizations, we do have the same end goals to benefit music therapists, advance the profession, and to ensure high quality music therapy services for the public. AMTA also works to involve and educate our members on national, advoca national advocacy issues of importance that impact the profession. Our federal advocacy work is focused on raising congressional, congressional and federal agency awareness of the efficacy of music therapy services, but also representing music therapy as a profession with it as members of national coalitions is a big part of AMTA's government relations work on the federal level. By having a seat at the table, music therapists and the clients they serve have a voice in policy dis policy discussions related to health and education issues on the national level. Jane talked a little bit about research and um, research is a, a big part of the work that um, AMTA helps to support. Um, research and music therapy supports its effectiveness in a wide variety of healthcare and educational settings. All of the work settings and populations that you will hear about in just a few minutes um, are supported by over 70 years of research documenting the effectiveness of music therapy. AMTA promotes the research by exploring the benefits of music as therapy. You produce two scholar scholarly journals where research in music therapy is published and shared. The Journal of Music Therapy is published by AMTA as a form for authoritative articles on the current music therapy research and theory. Articles explore the use of music in the behavioral sciences and include book reviews and guest editorials. Music therapy perspectives is designed to appeal to a wider readership. So both inside and outside the profession of music therapy. Articles focus on music therapy practice as well as academics and administration. Subscriptions to these journals, downloadable articles, and a limited number of open access articles are available on each respective journal's webpage that are both tied to the AMTA website. Links that allow you to access them are there. MTR 2025 was a great initiative that is still, is a great initiative that's still ongoing. It supports uh, funders, stakeholders, and clinician and important lines of research to benefit clients and the health of citizens overall. MTR 2025 was structured to foster dialogue and to embrace diversity in thinking, approaches to practice and methodologies. AMTA continues MTR 2025 by way of an array of discussions, activities and processes to infuse, embed and integrate research as a cross-cutting and essential feature of clinical and association functions designed to increase access to quality music therapy services. Jane also mentioned um, the Sound Health Network. 
and the Sound Earth Network being a partnership between the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, and the JFK Center for the Performing Arts in association with the National Endowment for the Arts. So it, 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 the initiative supports research on music, neuroscience, and health through several projects nationwide. In addition to those projects, the partnership aims to expand current knowledge and understanding of how listening, performing, or creating music involves intricate circuitry in the brain that could be harnessed for health and wellness application in daily life. Also seeks to explore ways to enhance the potential for music as therapy for neurological disorders. It also has an overall goal of creating public awareness of how the brain functions and interacts with music. A few of the more recent symposiums from the Sound Health Initiative that are available on the, the Sound Health website, which I can share with you. Uh, they're titled Relating Target Engagement to Clinical Benefit, Biomarker, Biomarkers for Brain Disorders of Aging. Assessing and Measuring tar Target Engagement, Mechanistic and Clinical Outcome measure, Measures for Brain Disorders of Aging. And also Laying the Foundation, Defining the Building Blocks of Music-Based Interventions. Sound Health is, again, as I mentioned, a truly exciting partnership with federal agencies and departments that have demonstrated a sincere desire to examine the intricacies of science of music and the brain. We're pleased to be active participants in this ongoing initiative. And I just wanted to share a great quote from the director of NIH, Dr. Francis Collins, that truly encompasses the spirit of the Sound Health Initiative. He said, we know that the beat of a metronome can steady the gait of someone with Parkinson's disease, for example, but we don't fully understand how that happens. If we can pinpoint in the brain how music therapy works through the use of imaging and biomarkers, the hope is that we can improve its effectiveness and apply it more broadly to improve the lives of millions of people who suffer from neurological and other disorders. So where do music therapists work? As you see on the slide, there are a wide variety of settings that music therapists work in. A music therapy clinical practice is based on research and proven intervention methods. And over the course of 70 years, music therapy clinical practice has expanded to cover a wide range of populations and settings, as you see on the slide. Many music therapists also establish their own private practice, and this is a growing area of, of clinical practice. Music therapists work with all ages from infants through the elderly. And it is our hope that with continued research, music therapy clinical practice will continue to expand to serve more clients. Music therapy services I often refer to I often refer to as cradle to grave services. Music therapists provide healthcare and education support services to individuals of all ages and ability levels, ranging from neonates and neonatal intensive care units to older adults in hospice care. Client groups served include those with developmental, developmental disabilities, including Down syndrome, autism spectrum disorders, Rett syndrome, fragile X syndrome, cerebral palsy, mental illness, for example, those with traumatic post-traumatic stress disorder, schizophrenia, bipolar depression, emotional and behavioral disorders and substance abuse, acute chronic illness or pain, such as HIV AIDS, cancer, multiple sclerosis, burn units, surgery units, impairments due to aging or accidents, including stroke, Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, traumatic brain injury and Parkinson's, hearing and visual or speech impairments, terminal illnesses, especially hospice and palliative care, learning disability for those, for example, those related to math difficulties, language difficulties, and motor difficulties, health and wellness issues, such as cardiac care and well senior care. And so some sample outcomes, um, various populations can include developmental and neurological growth, the improvement of coordination, the improvement of muscle strength, 
building brain body connections through neuroplasticity elements of music, psycho-emotional regulation, decreasing agitation and anxiety, and reinforcing positive behaviors. And so next we are gonna share just a short video clip so you can see music therapy in action. There is sound associated with that video and unfortunately it did not play, but we can provide you with that clip um, so that you can hear what happens as well as see um, what, how Mark was doing. Um, so we will, we will provide you with that link um, so that you can hear the clip as well as see it. Um, student organizations and resources. Uh, music therapy college students are part of a large network in the US and internationally. Each AMTA degree program has a student group and each region has a student group and they're all connected by the national organization, AMTAS, standing for American Music Therapy Association for Students. The resources provided by AMTS um, are hosting virtual cafes. They're presentations for students on a variety of topics that include internship, clinical practice with specific populations. Um, AMTS also offers scholarships as well as hosting an annual conference called Passages that are held within the annual AMTA conferences each year. AMTA also provides scholarships for interns as well as packets for students when they complete their internship and enter the professional world. The World Federation of Music Therapy is the international link for students. Um, the World Federation of Music Therapy is an international nonprofit organization that brings together music therapy associations and individuals interested in developing and promoting music therapy globally through the exchange of information, collaboration among professionals and actions. The World Federation for Music Therapy has a student organization which provides opportunities for students connect to connect with their peers in other countries and participate in international service projects. Uh, the World Federation for Music Therapy also offers scholarships to music therapy students. 
A listserv is also available for music therapy students that are interested in international issues. AMTA also does outreach to high school students. Uh, we do career days at regional and national conferences, um, colleges, high schools, um, presentations at conferences like the school guidance counselors, and also partnering with organizations like the National Consortium for Health and Science Education. AMTA is also working with school platforms like Zello and School Links to have information on music therapy as a career available to high school students as well as middle school students. Music therapy can make the difference between withdrawal and awareness, between isolation and interaction, between chronic pain and comfort, between demoralization and dignity. And that's a quote by Barbara Coro, who's a music therapist and a, a leader and pioneer of the profession. Music therapy is a profession that is growing and that is thriving. Our goal today was to communicate to you and your students that they, if they have an interest in the career and the health professions, and if they have a passion for music, please consider a career in music therapy. Music therapists can make a difference in the lives of so many. And so today with that, we're ended a little early, but many thanks to all of you for participating in today's Wednesday webinar. It is our hope that you share this information with other teachers and educators within your sphere. In addition to sharing this information with all of the students that you serve, thank you again for your time and attention. And we now have a few minutes to answer any questions you may have. Also, feel free to reach out to us via email as you'll see both of our email addresses listed here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, Rebecca, um, Marty from Michigan, I think, um, she did put the link, um, she called it Mark's video, the video that you showed that we weren't able to hear the sound. So she's got that in the chat, but um, how quick is that? Go Marty. Yes. <laughs> um, then I'll also, um, when we send out the certificates of participation for those folks that have been with us today, we'll put that link in that email as well. Um, I don't know if you saw Gwen Barrett, one of our teachers from Indiana. Did you see what she put in the chat about, um, Gwen, you wanna unmute yourself and just share a little bit about um, your, um, relationship with a mu music therapist? Sure, not a problem. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Okay. Or we could. Now you got muted again. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay. Uh, several years ago, I had a student who was interested in music therapy and I had been, I had remembered on my way to school, I had seen a sign that said, um, musical music therapy associates. And I thought, shoot, I'm going to contact them and find out what's going on. And I made an appointment and I spoke to the gal who was the administrator. And I said, I'd like to place a student with you for an internship. Well, one thing led to another. And she does something in, in our area called Optimal Rhythms and then Access Academy, works with a lot of autistic um, children, most up into the teens, mostly teens. And she's been very active in legislation in Indiana. And she's served on my advisory board and she's there just, you know, for me to give, get information from her and to give us information on what it is they do. So it's been kind of fun. Yeah, great. Well, thanks for, um, um, Gwen had sent me that in a direct message and without her permission, I just copied it and sent it out to everybody. So. Um, I thought that was a good, just a, a good reinforcement of um, those relationships that can be influential to the students that we have the honor to serve. Okay, yes. Anybody else have a question or something to add? I'm trying to see if our gentleman friend from Washington DC is on. Are you here? Um, don't remember exactly his name, but he told me how excited he was about this. And 
he had a music background himself. And so I wanted to put the spotlight on him if he were here, but um, if he is, he's being shy. So um, Rebecca and Jane, this was great information. I've already gotten a, a couple of emails um, from folks that couldn't be here that's, that wanted to know if um, this was being recorded. Of course, I tell them that every time, but yes, it's being recorded. And some of them said that they definitely wanted to use this with their um, class. So uh, Jenny Hughley said, Rise Center in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, has a music therapist that works with my granddaughter who has CP. Thanks for sharing that, Jenny. And then, um, Jennifer put a, a website there for op, optimal rhythms. Are you familiar with that, Rebecca and Jane? Op, optimal rhythms. I'm familiar yeah. with Jen, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> so I'm assuming that that's um, hmm. um, her private practice. If I'm, I think so. Hello. <laughs> Yeah. So hey, Jennifer. Uh, it's not mine. Casey DePriest and Eric Lund are the music okay. there. Mm, yeah. in Indiana. Okay. okay. I'd love to claim them as mine, but <laughs> okay. not my practice. It's great to see you. Okay. Well, don't doesn't everyone love the professor who lets them out early, right? Or doesn't show up to class. But um Jane and Rebecca we really appreciate, we know you've been planning to do this for a while and um, we're confident that this um, information will be used um, when teachers in, that we serve in middle and high school are introducing health professions. And uh, you gave great background information and um, we'll be sure to share that link that's so powerful um, where Mark has made vast improvements because of his musical therapy. So thank you, everyone. Look forward to uh, seeing you next Wednesday's webinar is going to be focusing on sports medicine and resources to help you deliver a sports medicine curriculum. So if that's an interest area, <clears throat> be sure and sign up for that October 6th opportunity. So have a great uh, rest of your week, everyone. And thanks again to the American Music Therapy Association. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being with us today. Yes. <laughs>